Hi there, this is Pastor Tabitha Purple. We are doing our daily devotionals, Corona devotional days. Uh, we're on day 44 of our daily devotionals, so if you're following the system along, you're at day 44, um, which is technically a little bit behind the actual numbering, but you'll be fine. It'll work. Um, we are looking at 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17. And this particular text, as you know, I'm following a daily devotional reading. They just give you a text per day. Sometimes it's one verse, sometimes it's three or four. And you tell me if this was a good idea. So 2 Corinthians 4 verse uh, 17, and it says, For our momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. That's the whole text. Now, you see, <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I read that, I read it three times, then I read it again, then I left it a day, then I came back to it to read it again, because I thought, what does that even mean? What are you talking about? Because it's just one sentence. And, it, you know, some sentences can be very profound. We're in the Twitter age. People put up one sentence that's very profound and is not always true. And there always is some holes to be poked in it. But, you know... You can have these profound sentences. This just does not feel like one of them. I need context. So I thought, okay, let's read the verses around it. So let's go back one to verse 16 and maybe plus one to verse 18 and see if this makes a little more sense in context. Therefore, we do not give up, even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day, for our momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. So we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen, for what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Oh, it makes more sense now, right? So when... <laughs> You know, I love um, the Bible readings for the day. I love verse for the day. I love all of these things that encourage us to read the Bible. Absolutely adore them. But I think one of the things that we have to remember that the Bible was not written in any way, shape or form to be pulled out as one verse for the day and just read in isolation constantly. They, they were written as stories. They were written as poems. They were... The only place arguably you could do this is the Proverbs. The book of Proverbs has these great one-liners. And even then, I would caution you against that because people pull them out as promises. They're not promises. They're Proverbs. It's very different. Um, but they're not meant to be read. It's not meant to be read like that. And certainly not a letter that is written to a group of people. So we're looking at Corinthians. This is the second of the letters. So there's a whole letter that goes before. There's context. Then there's a something that happens that causes the second letter to be written. And it's not that there aren't eternal truths and principles. But when we just pull out one sentence, are we really doing the, the author of that letter justice? when it was never meant to be read like that. And I think when we look at this, the whole little, it's a small paragraph, three three verses, it's talking about the focus of the mind, the focus of our energy. It's talking about where do we place our time? Are you just solely about material objects? Are you just completely consumed? And I've talked about not being a minimalist. So, you know, is that your, your particular thing? Or are you really thinking about the unseen things, the development of your character, you know, kindness, peace, patience, the development of your understanding of who God is, your development of your Christianity. Are these, these are the unseen things that you're focusing on. And if you're focusing on that, does that then mean that the, the, the things that you see on a regular basis, those material objects then have less value? Because really what you're doing is you're placing the emphasis and the value on the people, the relationships and the unseen beauty of the world that God made, which is in our character development, etc. So that's a really different thought for the day than what we read about light and not light. I'm just saying, you know, these are great moments of teaching that it's really important to get the whole story. But when we rip it out of context and use it as one verse, we're not doing that story justice. We're not doing that letter justice. And I can talk about this in different contexts and people get really upset because you talk about this when we talk about especially the Apostle Paul and especially when it comes to women, one verse and you might just pull it out and it says one thing, read it in context and it says something different. And People then want to say, oh, no, 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 but you just read it literally. But you can't just read something literally. 
is is it really a, a mathematical equation? Two plus two equals four. That's a mathematical equation. Okay, fine. Then you can read that as two plus two equals four. But now what if we're talking apples? What if we're talking grapes? Is it a bunch of grapes? In which case it's not two plus two, is it? It's two bunches. And then how many grapes are in each bunch? We don't know. So there's context to the the question the text that we're being given and to just blow through it because we just want the easy quick fix of christianity one verses is not a helpful way and this particular text really reminds us of that and it's a good reflection point i think for me and for for you today is to think about actually am i doing that am i blowing through christianity claiming its name but actually not spending time in the stories and the real meaning and underlying messages that are coming through and i'm claiming something that i just have one verse in my mind i don't actually know the context and that's not to say that jesus doesn't save that's not what i'm talking about I'm talking about representing christianity in the world that's a slightly different question being saved being a christian in jesus's eyes and going uh, to be with him on the earth made new that's that's one thing representing Jesus in real life is a totally different expectation and a totally different action and I think sometimes we need to separate the kind of judgmental aspect the judgmental aspect of me talking about your soul I'm not that's not my business I'm not concerned with but the fact that you can rip a verse out of context make it say something that you want it to say in order to beat somebody else up and then talk about the fact that you're a Christian you're representing Christ is that what the what Jesus the Christ, the Messiah would do. No, because you'd need to read it in context to understand what the point is that is trying to be made. So yeah, it's an interesting verse today. It's a little bit challenging to read out of its context, but when you read it in its context, it makes sense. I challenge you to kind of stay in context and see where it takes you. Good, God bless and see you on our next devotional. Bye-bye.